Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 16 Plus 7620. Um, so this hinge is kind of broken, so we're going to be taking it apart and seeing if we can repair that. We're going to be using a most likely PH0, let's see, yep, PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. And we're going to undo all the screws. I think the screws actually stay attached to the bottom cover. Um, oh, okay, so not all of them, so keep these in order just in case. Um, usually they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and I remove them. So let's go ahead and continue removing the screws. I think it might just be these two corner screws that stay in place. So let's go ahead and continue removing the others. Yep. Okay, again, keep them in order. You don't want to mix them up. If there are different size screws and you mix them up, then it can actually damage the computer. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue removing these screws. All right. For the most part, they look to be about the same so far, but uh, the screws inside are very likely going to be different. So again, you want to be careful not to mix things up, right? I've seen some where people just throw them in little containers. I don't recommend that. <coughs> I always recommend putting the same screws back where you got them. All right, so we got all those screws out. Let's go ahead now and see if we can pop the bottom cover. So you can see it formed a gap here. So I'll start from there, pull up, and then usually there's going to be a little gap here, as you can see, a gap between the palm rest and there. Uh, one thing I'm worried about is there's a big bend in the bottom cover here. So I don't know if I'll be able to just JB weld this. Usually I'll use JB weld to hold this. I'll see if I can somehow bend this back. All right, so we're going to pull this up, and I'm going to slide my fingernail on that gap. Let's see if we can pop the clips, okay? Let's see. Wow. Nope. Those clips are super strong. So let's go and go ahead and go down the side maybe. Let's see. So we'll pull this up. You can see it formed a gap here on the side, but this isn't coming out. So this is very strange because the screws do pull up the bottom cover and give you access. But the clips are so strong that it's not really helping too well. So let's see. I'm going to try and do that again. Nope. Nothing. And you can see this side, it's not popping out either. All right, so how are we going to pop this apart? Let's see. What will help to get this apart? You can see it popped, like one of the clips here popped up. Okay. And, oh, pulling on it hard kind of, I guess, popped up a little bit. So I'm trying to pull this a bit more. But no, it's not really coming up very easily at all. Okay, pulling like this did unclip a little bit over here. I'm gonna work our way down and see what we got. Okay, looks like we only got that side, so let's go ahead and try and do this as well. So pull this up. Try to pull this and pop these clips up. See, these clips are holding super strong. Wow, what in the world? Okay, it's able to pop it a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's actually popping towards the front here but not very easily. Where are the clips in the middle? There's some clips in the middle holding it down. It doesn't want to pop up at all. So I'm gonna try and pull this up. Let's see if we can pull it side to side, no? Wow, the clips in here are super strong. Ouch. Okay, so this laptop isn't easy to get apart at all. I'm, pull I'm putting a lot of force into pulling this up and it's not really coming up. So let's see here. You can see it's kind of separating there. Jeez. Okay, so it does take quite a bit of force. Let's see if a um, suction cup will help at all. Okay, we'll try and pull towards the middle. Nope, nothing. Nope, nothing. So we're probably gonna have to just damage the clips here, sadly. Okay, so we're going to continue trying to pull up here. I'm going to see if I can somehow, nope, getting my fingernails in there doesn't do anything. So I guess we'll have to work on just pulling this side up because this edge, the clips are actually releasing and it has four screws. So if, for some reason, if the clips break, um, you will still be able to kind of hold that, secure that down with screws. But it doesn't seem to want to move. Let's try and go more towards the center. Okay, it's popping up some clips here. Wow, what is going on? Whatever's in the middle here, the clip is super strong. It doesn't want to pop out at all. Okay, 
I don't think there's any hidden screws in the middle of the keyboard. <sighs> yeah, I don't see a way they can do anything with that. So we're just going to continue using force here. Again, this is not easy at all. It's not moving very easily. Let's see if we pull this down while we kind of try and, okay. So that kind of popped a clip open, but it's not really getting this apart. Jeez. If somebody knows an easier way to get this apart, feel free to mention it in the comment section below. You can see we now have the whole front row popped up, but even with this whole front row popped up, there's some clips in the middle that really don't want to let go. I don't know what's going on there. Are they clips? The laptop turned itself on. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to flex it in this way, but it's not even giving. Wow. Okay, so this, you can see I pulled the whole cover down this way. And you can see it released. Okay, there we go. It released the top, and now we got this. So here you can see the clips here. So the clips actually hook into this. So it does need to pull this cover this way to pop it out. And then this cover pulls needs to pull in this way. So I guess if you use a kind of a good tool, you can kind of get it and wedge it and pull it that way. And that will put pressure on this top part to pull it back. Or technically this is the bottom. All right, so here we have access. Wow, there's a lot of like dust in here. See that? I'm gonna have to clean this up. So let me take this out to dust it first and then I'll be back, all right? So basically I'm just gonna scrub this all with a toothbrush and then dry it, um, use an electric air blower to clean it up. So the thing's turning itself on. I gotta be careful and hold the hinge here while I carefully open this up. Okay, you can see it turned itself on, so I need to shut this down. All right, so let me shut this down real quick. I think this computer's turning itself on. All right, anyways, we'll wait till it shuts down just so we can be sure it's not gonna do anything weird. It's still on. Sorry, uh, you can fast forward over this portion. It's gonna be somewhat long. There you go, it kind of turned itself off. Make sure it's completely off, it's not doing anything. Okay, we're gonna carefully close this. I'm pushing down on this to keep the hinge that's separating from the screen flat, okay? And let's go ahead now and actually remove or disconnect the battery first because we don't want anything weird happening while we're working on it. We're going to switch over to PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to undo those screws. Okay, again, keep the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. So we got one there, we got one here. And they actually label this M2 by 4. So, yeah. Right, and I believe that measurement is a two millimeter like the diameter and then four millimeter long. Okay, so we got those and then hit these have two by three. So these should be a little bit shorter. Or at least that's the theory, I can't tell. It looks to be about the same to be honest. So I'm confused now. Okay, well, it's always a good idea not to mix up screws. Oh, this says two by three, even though there's nothing there. So I guess maybe this is a battery that's more universal. All right, I'm gonna lift the battery up and out carefully. I'm gonna get my finger underneath to pinch this. And then while I pinch this, I'm gonna wiggle it side to side as I pull. And this should wedge the battery connector out. There we go, ouch. All right, so the battery model number of this is 69KF2, so if you need to replace the battery, 69KF2. Right, so this has a little cable here, and I'm not quite sure how this releases. I'm not replacing the battery, so I don't wanna really mess around with it. it. Looks like you'd have to peel this adhesive up. Actually, let me see if I can figure it out and not do too much like disassembly. But, uh, We'll see if it's something simple. All right, so we gotta peel this adhesive that's wrapped around up. Peel this out. I'm gonna roll the adhesive this way and peel it this way, so that way it doesn't pull up on this silver piece. And this kind of looks like it just slots in. Does this move at all? 
I don't know, I'm not able to move this at all, so I'm not quite sure. I can't tell. You might have to get the replacement battery and then see what this looks like to figure out how it's held in place. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this back over because I don't want it to get damaged, okay? And we'll set this aside for now. Again, I'm going to now clean this up. I'm going to get a toothbrush to loosen the dust and then use an electric air blower to clean it out. I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue this. We're going to have to carefully open this up. There's quite a bit of dust. I don't know if I can pull the fans out. We'll try and remove them. Looks like there's two screws. Hopefully that's all. Um, but we're going to carefully open this. I got to push down on the hinge from in here. Okay, to carefully open this up. Again, we have to be careful because the metal frame is broken. Um, but anyways, we're gonna press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power, all right? <clears throat> this is important, especially since we're messing with the screen. You don't want to do this when there's still power in the board. Um, so that's why we pulled out the battery. All right, so anyways, after we hold this button down, we're gonna go ahead and continue disassembly. Um, if you can't work on it this way, you might have to hang the screen over the edge of your desk and you'll basically be working on it upside down, but let's see if we can continue with it this way. All right, so we're gonna be very careful here. The clips that hold this in place are broken, so we're gonna have to figure out something there. All right, let's go ahead and undo the two screws for the fan just to see, okay? And be careful because the screws can fall out all right these are longer ones again you want to be careful not to mix the screws up you don't want to lose them or put the wrong screws in the wrong hole all right so now we can yes we can lift these out and for the most part i cleaned out most of the dust so we should be good um but i guess i can blow it up a little bit just in case there's a tiny bit of dust there all right you can see the fingerprint reader here i'm gonna have to probably zoom in a bit so you guys can see all the components. I'll kind of point them out. Um, so if you don't care about that, you can kind of just skip over to whatever, but I'm gonna kind of try and go over everything. So here you can see the fingerprint reader. Um, it looks like there's a screw which is hidden underneath the heat sink. So if you wanna remove that, you either have to take the heat sink out and redo the thermal paste, or if you're able to pull the whole motherboard logic board out. I'm not gonna be doing that though. It looks like they have little feathers in here, so they must have birds, and that's why um, it's it was so dusty, if you remember. All right, so the fan has this little piece that tucks underneath the heatsink, so make sure you get that under there. And there's a little raised mount here that goes and holds the fan into place, and then we'll just get these two screws back in. All right, if you're wondering, the fan comes out. There's the fan connector. You just grab and wiggle and wiggle, and then you can pull that connector out. If you're not sure how, um, I do have videos showing that, but this one, I'm not going to be pulling out connectors. I don't need to. This is the other fan connector there underneath uh, in that little plastic window. Okay, Move those two, and let's see if we can lift this fan out or if it's stuck. So this fan, you kind of have all this stuff in the way. Um, most likely if we peel this up, we can get it out. So let's see here, since the fans... It's good to um, roll the adhesive back to prevent it from pulling on these things too hard. Okay, so we're gonna peel that up and let's see. Oh yeah, now we can get this out. Uh, Dust-wise, it's mostly cleaned up as well here, so we should be okay. It's pretty dusty because of the feathers. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and put this back in. You do have to tuck this part underneath the um, heat sink at, like the other one. Okay, and then we'll drop that down. We can stick all this back down. Let's go ahead and get these two screws back in as well. All right. All right, so in terms of other removable replacement things, there's not too many. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector here. It looks like the DC jack charge port connector here. You do have to peel that tape and then you can grab the wings and wiggle to pull it out. To remove it though, you do need to undo the hinges. Okay, you got one speaker here. Plug into this, or that's might be actually two. All right, you got the CPU and GPU underneath here. I believe this is GPU and then CPU is somewhere here, or maybe this is only CPU. Um, there's only one slot for RAM it looks like, and it's DDR5. There's a 32 gig stick of RAM, PC54800B. All right, so if you need to replace the RAM, there it is. 
There's a slot here for an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. I'm not going to take it out, but as you can see, they use a short one here, and then they use a little bracket with a screw mounted into this piece on the other side to hold that down. Um, if you're going to replace the SSD, you're most likely going to use a full length one here. So you would actually throw this little heat shield thingy away um, because you're not going to be at well, let me actually open it and show you why. Okay, so let's take this out one screw. Why not? And then we'll lift this slightly and wiggle to pull this out. All right, so you can see the heat sink here. So in order to put a real like a full size SSD, you wouldn't be able to use this bracket. There's these raised metal things that will poke into it and destroy it. So keep that in mind. I don't know if you can use this heat shield. Probably not either. All right, but this holds the SSD there in place. So we'll get this SSD back in and then we should be okay. All right, it's hard to line this up. Does this move at all? No, they put a little thermal pad in there also. Okay, so this is a little tricky. Maybe I shouldn't have taken it out. This is going to be a pain now. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> How does this work? There's one screw. Okay, that's weird. Okay, wait. So this whole thing actually separates. So this heat spreader thing separates from the SSD. So as you can see, I guess if you're using a full size SSD, you would just use this copper plate and you would throw this piece away. All right. Anyways, we'll get this back in. So this goes in here. This, I guess, acts as an adapter, as you can see, to make this into one of the full sized SSDs. All right. So I guess this just actually drops on top. Interesting. Okay. Line that up and this thing just drops on top. There's no hooks or anything, and the thermal pad, I guess, just sticks down on its own. There's nothing really holding it on this side. That's strange. All right, and then we just got the one screw here. First time I've ever seen that. Usually it has that wedged into something, but that wasn't wedged into anything. Hmm. Yeah, this kind of just aligns it. All right, you got the keyboard connector here. This has a flip latch and then you can pull it out. Keyboard backlight connector, flip latch is on this side and then you can pull this out. You got the wireless card here with the two wireless antennas underneath this, All right? It looks like the black antenna is on the left with the black arrow and the white one is on the one with the white arrow, obviously, okay. Then you got the speaker connector here. So the, there's a wire going to the speaker here and another wire going to that speaker there. What else? Touchpad, trackpad connector here with the flip latch, the white one actually. You flip that up, you can pull that out. Again, fan connector. You have the IO board connector here. This has some adhesive and then a little flip latch. So you peel that up and then there's this metal bar that goes around there with some black capped on tape kind of stuff on it. So you, I usually just use my fingernail at a corner and flip that up. All right. And that's for the SD card slot, USB port, and the headphone 3.5 millimeter probably also is for the what do you call um gosh i can't remember <laughs> um yeah headset jack sorry um this one says fpr1 so fingerprint reader and then i don't know what the other one is for i guess i think both of them are for a fingerprint reader let me actually take this out again um actually that's the power button and the fingerprint reader right so um, it looks like the black cable is for the fingerprint reader. It's all going up in here. And then the white cable is probably for the power button itself. All right? So, sorry, I know this video is somewhat long doing stuff that probably a lot of people aren't going to need. Um, but I kind of want to show everything that's going on here. All right. If you're wondering, the wireless antennas actually are um, on the side here. So here and here. Okay, next to the speakers. And let me zoom out. I guess that's why on the bottom cover, if you look at that, right, the bottom cover has these. And I think that's because this is, yeah, plastic. So it's to prevent it from blocking or interfering with the wireless antennas. This is a little dusty as well. Let me clean that and I'll be back again. All right, back. I just cleaned that up a little. All right, we'll set that aside again. And let's go ahead now and see about removing the screen. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. Luckily, it looks like only one screen uh, cable is going into the screen, and that's this LCD LVDS connector. 
So this has an adhesive tape. Um, let me actually use this little plastic thing to make it easier to get it out. So we're going to go in here and we're going to use this little pokey tool to get under the little edge of that adhesive and then peel that up. All right. So let's peel that up. Go ahead and peel all the way across. All right. This has the metal latch like for the IO board. So again, I just use my fingernail at the corner and then flip that up. All right. And then once you do that, I push at the bottom of the latch on both sides to pull that out. There we go. We're going to have to untangle this or unroute it. It wraps around here. So we're going to pull that around and then we can take this out. I'm surprised it's not actually going under here. This cable should actually follow this, go into this, tuck, go under here. Okay. You see that little thing and then it should go into that. I don't know why they weren't using this groove here and then this should wrap around and then do what it was doing before. But anyways, I don't know why they weren't using that, but I guess if you want, you can leave it out. All right, anyways, now we gotta get to the hinges. So we're gonna zoom out here. Okay, and to remove the hinge screws, okay, first thing what we wanna do is actually carefully open the laptop, all right? And yeah, all right, so I'm gonna carefully open the laptop. Again, I need to hold down the area where the hinge is popping out because I don't want it to rip the plastic bezel into pieces. So I'm just holding it down and then opening that up. Okay, then we're gonna carefully flip this over, hang the screen over the edge of my desk. Let me actually zoom out some more, okay. All right, so hopefully you can see that. I guess I need to zoom out more, huh? Okay, so now you can see a bunch of junk on my desk. Ignore that stuff. All right, we're gonna undo these screws for the hinge now. So we got one here and then one here. Keep track of them. These screws are different from the others. Okay, and also this screw in the middle here, it doesn't exist, and this one doesn't exist. It's actually part of the bottom cover, right? So then we'll get this screw out and this screw out. All right, now that we've got those four, we could hopefully carefully lift this straight up. Yep, and there we go. So here's this screen display assembly, and here's the bottom uh, portion of the laptop. Um, if you want to replace this keyboard, it is held in with melted plastic. So I would actually um, recommend replacing the entire palm rest assembly. The touchpad looks like it should be replaceable. There's a screw here, here, and then three screws down here. But uh, we're not replacing that right now. We're going to work on the hinge here. Okay, so here you can see the broken hinge portion. So we're going to pull that up. It looks like this piece separates from the rest of it so let's see can we separate it or is it part of it i don't know all right well can we somehow bend this i don't know if i can safely bend this without damaging the rest i'm gonna have to like put my finger under hand under here and then i'm gonna try and push on this slightly and see if i can bend it back a bit actually okay push that this back a bit and you got to be careful because you don't want to put too much pressure and then destroy the LCD that's in there okay it does look like it's kind of bending back but not completely so I don't know this whatever material they used here it's kind of not very good it bends somewhat pretty easily but getting it back to perfect is pretty difficult right so we're gonna go ahead and pull up the bezel here. So I'm gonna peel this up. You wanna do this slow and careful because there's adhesive attaching to the screen. And if you're not careful and you pull up too fast or usually there's that. So right now you can see the silver layers separating here. You don't want that to peel up. You wanna peel this bezel separately. So if you can, I would pull here and then get my finger or some tool to push that stuff down. It's better to use something very thin it doesn't matter if it's metal or not, but if you do use something metal, make sure you're not going under the LCD portion. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna just pull that portion down as I peel this up, okay? So basically, I'm trying to keep the portion that's attached to the screen, attached to the screen, you see it's trying to keep peeling itself up. Um, since we only need to fix this side of the hinge, let's see if we can somehow peel this side up and then 
maybe we can leave the rest so we don't risk damaging more of the screen. So I'm kind of wiggling and pulling this and basically we're kind of rotating it like this and pushing it in towards the center to release the clips, okay? Let's see if I can get this corner one because this corner is being stubborn, there we go. And there's adhesive all along. So I'm, again, twisting like this and pushing towards the inside. Uh, so once you get it down, you can go pretty quick like this, okay? And then we're gonna carefully do the same thing up here. Again, twisting it and pushing towards the center, but you're only applying a little bit of force. You don't wanna go pull, put too much pressure, okay? You can see this is mechanism, uh-oh, this mechanism's falling out. So make sure to keep track of that because we are gonna have to put that back as well. Okay, so we're going all the way around. We'll set that aside for now and we'll continue peeling this up. Okay. Just like that, and it looks like this is gonna be a pain, huh? Okay, so we're gonna carefully peel this. Now we're towards the middle here, and this portion does not want to come up. Let's see, there we go, okay. And we got this gap here. We're gonna try and push in to pop the clip, but let's see, all right, so I'm getting my fingernail on there, and I'm just gonna pop the clip just like that, all right? Obviously, you can use pry tools, and you don't have to use fingernails, whatever works for you. Okay, and this part is also kind of stuck in there. So you can't just pop this piece out and throw it away. Okay, it's stuck. It looks like it's kind of attached to this. So let's see, actually, maybe not because you see this is coming out now. But it's still stuck to something. What's going on? Oh, it's super long. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue getting this out. We're probably again going to have to use the thin tool to help push this film down, okay? And I'm gonna just basically rotate it, work my way across, and then rotate this to peel that film down. Okay, hopefully you get the idea. I'll show you, oh, that piece kind of tore now. So how am I gonna get that up? You see that? It's separating there, this is not, this piece does not want to go easily. So we're gonna have to carefully take a look. Uh oh, it's peeling up on this side as well. So now that you can see there, I'm gonna try and get this in and push that down, okay? To get behind that layer because it's basically wrapped like a sandwich like this over or a taco, I don't know, taco sleeve. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna try and get in there and try and peel that stuff out now So maybe I can go in from this side and then do that But I don't know. I can't really hold it up that way for you guys to see So I'm gonna have to rotate it this way so I can see sorry It's more important that I can see so I can fix this thing properly I'm gonna get this in pull that down and I don't know that layer of film doesn't want to completely come out That's gonna be very difficult. If I was replacing the LCD, I wouldn't have to worry, and I would just quickly just pull it all out, but okay, here we go. And oh, here you can see how this holds in place. Interesting. Hmm. So this goes in there. All right, this goes in here. It had a little raised thing, but that broke, and then it kind of goes back here, it seems. Oh, I see. There's two little things that come out. Wait, what? Oh yeah, and then they melted it to that, but it looks like it broke off completely. So this is somewhat part of the bezel, okay? All right, we're gonna try and pull this up. So I pushed in from this side to pull these clips, okay? And now we're gonna have to worry about this adhesive from the bottom side, you see? It's holding on there. So now we gotta carefully peel this away, pulling that down. I hope the LCD is okay. I'm trying to do this as gentle as possible. Um, I see the adhesive. There's an adhesive, black adhesive strip that's grabbing it. So we're gonna have to actually peel that adhesive out. Okay, that's gonna be annoying. So I'm gonna try and just peel that off from here. You see this? So there's this stretch adhesive at least it seems like a stretch release adhesive so you see if you pull it straight it releases so we're just going to go all the way down continue pulling this 
and hopefully it will release the rest of the um, bezel from the silvery aluminum part. All right. Oh, nope. It <laughs> broke. All right. Take it slow, I guess. I pulled probably too fast. All right. Okay. This is working. And no, you don't need to put this kind of adhesive back. You can if you want, but it's unnecessary. Look at all that. Okay. Um, it kind of separated now. So how are we going to get it again? All right. It's separated. We're going to carefully continue peeling this down. All right. So now, again, pull it in towards the center. Rotate it. Come on. There's only a little more. The adhesive is stuck to it. That's the problem. Okay. I don't know if we can get that adhesive out. Man, I'm struggling with this one. This is kind of annoying. All right. Let's get the adhesive. Let's see if we can peel an edge of it and then stretch it again. Yep. Okay. So here we go. I can stretch it and it's releasing. I guess let's just go slower. I'm, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. We're just going to go slower. So very slowly, keep pulling on it, and hopefully it will all eventually separate. And go very slow. And you want to try and pull this as straight as possible. You don't want to go that like perpendicular. You want to pull it s the same way that the um, tape is actually going. Okay, again. Go very slow now, and let's see. We're almost there. Separating. Okay. All right, I think we got most of it. It seems there's still a tiny bit left, but hopefully that's little enough that we can go ahead and pull this out. Yep, there we go. All right, so there was this tiny bit left. It was actually sticking to this portion. Again, you don't really need to put this adhesive back, but here we go. Okay, so you pulled that out. Here's the screen. Okay, so this foily portion, you want to be very careful. You see these yellowy things or the brownish yellow? So if you damage those, your screen is not going to work if you accidentally rip those cables. So you want to be very careful. All right, there's a lot. There's another one there and another one here. Okay, and that's why you have to be very careful with this portion on some of the screens they'll actually come with a thing that's here that says do not touch all right it's okay if you touch it just be very careful and gentle with those cabling all right i'm gonna try and flatten down this foil now all right flatten the foil back down so it's back covering the whole screen oh you can see this got really badly wrinkled but uh it should be okay I want to try and straighten it out if possible. Okay, there we go. It's probably about the best we're going to get without risking damage. Okay, if you're trying to take the screen out from this thing to replace it, there's actually stretch release adhesive. So you see this tab? Okay, you would grab that and then you would pull it just like we were pulling that adhesive like sideways like this. This one you pull straight down, it'll keep stretching. So just keep pulling and pulling and eventually it'll come out and then you can check the screen and everything. Okay, so what we need to repair, this is okay. You can see this. You see how wobbly this is? The problem is it's not this hinge mechanism that's broken. It's what's underneath that's holding this. So are we going to have to take the whole screen out? Let's see. How can we fix this? Okay, I'm going to try taking the hinge out just to see what's underneath. I'll set the bezel aside. All right, so we got one screw here. It appears the screw mounts are actually good. And what's going on is the thing that it's attached to is separating. Let's see, is this one OK? Usually I see these screw mounts break, but here you can see we can get the hinge out. <sighs> All right, so the design is very bad because it's very thin like this. The hinge should actually be long like this. And uh, the reason why is because the force, if you try and hold this and twist, you can see I there's no way I can stop this from turning. But if it's like this and I try and twist it this way, I have a lot more leverage that if I grab all the way up here, 
you're not going to be able to twist it okay so this is a very bad design you don't want these narrow bezels here you want a hinge that can actually go up into there all right and that will hold very strong but because it's holding like this it's just twisting and you can see it actually ripped this thing up the thing is i don't know how i'm going to get underneath to secure it oh actually this hinge even broke here you see that so i'm gonna have to take that portion out i need to see if i can secure this onto the bezel so it's back again like this so this needs to be secured onto the thing like this somehow the problem is i need to figure out where the center is so i might have to just put it and then just leave it here let's see or i can look at this one i guess as long as it's no it has to be exactly centered if it's slightly off it's gonna cause problems so i might have to click this in and then worry about putting glue under here and then slide it in somehow all right so we'll have to figure that out but that might be a messy a bit messy i can probably do it with jb weld um all right so we got that i might have to go to my car and get my little tweezers let's see if we can pull this up you see okay so here you can see this piece is broken so that one was actually pulling up let's see uh, let me use a flathead screwdriver and I want to see so this portion is actually okay you see this this metal piece isn't doing anything this is actually just foil let me actually zoom in here so you would probably think why don't you just glue this back in the problem with gluing this back in this little piece is going to end up just breaking off. I can try doing it, but it's going to end up a not very permanent repair. You see this? How wobbly this thing is as well. So the thing is, how am I going to get glue or anything under here? Oh, okay. So I can actually lift this up. You see that? So I'm going to have to use something to lift this up, get some JB Weld epoxy underneath there, and then set it back down. Um... So most of the force is actually going here. They should have put a screw closer to where the actual hinge mechanism is. So with this design, maybe I could glue back in the screw thing. Um, I don't know how effective that is going to be in the long run, though. Um, and since you don't really need to replace the hinge to remove the screen here, I might just go the route of... Um, securing it completely down with JB Weld. We do need to figure out a way to get under here and then put some glue. But other than that, I think we should be good. So how can I get under here? Let's see, I'm gonna try and pry this up. Okay, and you can see we can I can lift this quite a bit. So if I can get some JB Weld under here, maybe I'll mix them up and then get the screwdriver under there to kind of fill it up it's kind of a pain it keeps slipping up. okay so we can lift that kind of push some JB welds under there and then we can probably reseat this and it should be okay All right I'm gonna see if I can get a tool to get under here and hold this thing up maybe with this but I'd have to lift this enough I'm worried it's just gonna snap off Wow, actually this goes pretty far down, so I think I have to get a tool under it like this. How can I, what can I put in there? This screwdriver? Oh, it's actually staying lifted right now. That's good. Okay, I lifted it high enough that it's actually staying up on its own. Okay, I'm going to get some JB Weld, push it under here, and then we'll reseat this down. Um, and then we'll use a little bit to put onto here and then secure this into place okay all right and then I'm not sure how the other side because I do see the clip there so maybe it just wasn't aligned right so wow how is there so much dust in the hinge like bird feathers and stuff it's pretty crazy okay I want to make sure that area is clean. 
before we work on it. Okay, you can actually see the old, I don't know if you can see it, I hope you can. Okay, you can somewhat, oh yeah, you can see where the adhesive was under there and that's not enough adhesive. So we're gonna try and seal that back up and then maybe I'll put a little bit in here just to see, I'll try and seal this back up. I'll put a little bit of JB Weld here. I don't know, I'll probably, I feel like I'll regret it if I try that. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to do combination because the whole screw is going to hold there. This piece just goes, sits in there. Okay. Oops. I'll give it a try. Let me zoom out. Sorry. I don't know what you guys were seeing. Um, okay. So let's get this guy back out here. I'm going to try and fill this area with JB Weld and see if I can fix it. So I'm going to JB Weld the back here, put a bunch around the edges. I'm gonna try and avoid this. Actually, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape over this hole just so it doesn't go into the screw mount. So let me do that real quick, okay. All right, so we'll get a piece of tape and we're just gonna seal up that little hole there so that JB Weld glue doesn't go into that hole because you don't want that to go in there and then the screw is permanently gonna be stuck in that hole and then if you need to remove it, I don't know what you'll have to do, but all right, so I'll do that. I'm gonna cut this into like a little circle, kind of. I made a little square and now I'm cutting the corners off. I know this is a long video, I'm sorry, but I like to document what I had to do, okay? So I'm gonna cut, this, cut those little corners and then it's kind of like a hexagon now. It's a little bit too big, but I think it should be okay. Okay, so we're basically gonna cover that hole there. So when we put this back into place later with the JB Weld, it's not gonna get the glue into it, okay? So now let's go ahead and mix up some JB Weld. Um, if you're not sure how that works, it's a two-part epoxy, all right? You don't wanna use the quick stuff. You want the original, this black and white stuff, okay? So we shouldn't need too much because we're just filling a little gap here. We're not really like gonna flood the area with it. Okay, so we'll open this up. Squeeze out a little bit. It's probably a lot more than enough already. So we'll get that. Just like that. All right, you don't wanna use the same tool to get more because then you'll mix the two layers or the two parts together early you don't want to do that so I'm gonna fold this I'm gonna just clean this off all right so I use the yellow for the white and then the blue for the black makes it easier the light color to the light the dark to the dark and then I use a green one to mix them all right so we got to scoop out some of the black now Just like that. Close this up. Okay. And I'll just kind of get as much as I can off the screwdriver. And then same thing, we'll wipe this off. Okay, now I got the green one to stir the yellow and blue together, basically. <laughs> All right, so white and black, obviously where it's gonna turn gray. I like to use this little clear container thing to stir it on because then I can look at the bottom and make sure it looks all stirred together from the bottom as well. Okay, so stir that up. And then you can look at the bottom and you see there's a streak of black, so we need to continue stirring and mixing. Okay, get back if there's still some. Okay, fold that up. All right, so now we got this all mixed up. We got to fill up the gaps here. So we have this, I don't know how I'm going to show this. We have this raised up here, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to get this underneath, try and avoid all of this area. We don't need the JB Weld there, but this is going to be tough. It's probably going to end up on it anyways. So we'll just push the JB Weld into there. and then just roll it around. 
Get that all around. All right, we're gonna get some more. Kind of a thick layer. And we're just gonna push it all under. Okay, try and get it. You can see I'm getting it past that little gap there. All right. And it's gonna ooze up in there. Um, you don't need to get it all the way down here. The main thing is getting it to these two points so that they don't um, lift back up. Once you do that, we're gonna push that back in. I think I have to actually push it over this way. Yep, there we go. And now it's down, all right. And it's gonna ooze out. You can see it's oozing into there and oozing out this gap. If you want, you can clean all that extra ooze. You can see some is oozing out here, but that's gonna help hold it down into place. All right, we're gonna also get some here. You don't want it like going all out everywhere, so make sure you didn't put way too much. Um, but yeah, all right. Sorry, this is a long video for what it is. All right, I'm gonna scrape up some more of the JB Weld. We're gonna put it in this gap over here. Okay, and we're just filling up this area. Put some in there because this screw mount broke. Okay, so we're gonna fill up the old screw mount area. All right, and then it's also a good idea to put it on the back of the piece that we're sticking in place to make sure there's no air pocket that's just sitting there. I hope this will hold up well. Okay, the other plastic didn't break, so I think we should be okay. All right, so this piece, I'm gonna hold it there and we're just gonna brush some on. Okay, so now the whole bottom here should make contact with the JB Weld. And then we're gonna get it all around the edge here where the little screw, um, whatever you wanna call that, the washer nut thing is. Okay, you wanna get it all over the side to make sure that it's gonna stick. Okay, so we're gonna get that all in there. And brush it all on the sides. Okay, so that's probably way more than enough. It's gonna ooze out everywhere. <laughs> Let me zoom in and then show you we're gonna put this piece in, okay? So we do need to get that screw back or the whatever you call that thing back lined up. Okay, put that in, push that down. Okay, so push that into place. I need to clean this up before it all sticks to my hands. Okay, the excess you can just toss, wipe it up with a napkin or whatever you wanna do, okay? I like to use this to fill like random gaps. I have a desk that's broken outside and then I just fill up the gap there. All right, so we're gonna push this down into place. Oh, you can see the plastic here breaking off. Okay, see that? So we're gonna get rid of that broken plastic stuff and we actually need to replace that with JB Weld so it holds stronger. Okay, so we'll fill up this area with the JB Weld. See, all this broken plastic, we wanna get rid of that because that's not gonna hold anything and then Push this down in more. Get that all. Okay. And then let's go ahead and scrape up some more. And we're just gonna fill up the area around the screw mount just to make sure it holds really well. All right, so we should be good. Since I have a tiny bit more, I'll see if I can fill up that area a bit more. Okay, tiny bit 
more. Let's see, where should I, should I put it under here? Okay, well, follow up this a bit more just to make sure it doesn't come out. Oh, don't go into the screw hole, please. And if you're wondering how you can remove this stuff, if it's on metal, you actually can just heat it like with a lighter or candle, and then you can actually, it'll make it really soft and you can remove it if you need to after it's been set for a while, okay? So I'm gonna clean this stuff up here. Okay, obviously you can skip over this part of the video. I'm just cleaning up the my tools here. Okay. All right, that's all done. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Oh, actually I should have saved a little. Okay, let me, I'm gonna take a little bit out of here because we did need to actually fix this piece here. So I'm gonna, Take a little of the JB weld from this and just stick it where that old thing was holding it there and on the other side as well. Okay. Where that broken plastic was. So now we have JB weld that will replace that when we go to put this back in, okay? Set that aside again. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's put this thing back together. Okay, let's zoom out here. So we have this. We have this broken piece here. Okay, so first things first. How does this work? Okay. So we got the bezel. And we got this. So we're going to put these... In first okay so this goes under here and lines up make sure you don't destroy oops destroy this piece so this has to go here so I guess we'll do that and then can we rotate it or no nope so how are we gonna do this let's see it's tough we have to actually bend this slightly it looks like so line up the two screws here okay or at least one Hold down place, pull this back, and then drop it. And there we go, that actually fit. Okay, now we gotta get the two screws here. I don't know if I'll be able to, how will I let this set properly? Because it needs to be pinched together for it to completely set. All right, so we got these two screws in. You can see this whole thing keeps wanting to move up because this piece got bent. All right, and then we got this last one here. We'll fit that in as well. All right, get that screw in. Get this in. I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna open the hinge a little. Okay, so I was pushing down on this screw and then I pulled this hinge back. All right, so I tightened this all the way in, but that little piece is gonna keep spinning around. So we're gonna have to wait a while for it to set and then it should be good. All right, so we're gonna get this into place now. And this needs to line up here. So again, if you want, you can line this up. And then, I don't know if it will click still, but okay, it will. I'll have to hold it here. Okay, so now that's lined up, and then we'll get the rest of this in. So we'll start with this side. Make sure that's lined up. You can see it went into place. And then we're gonna work our way to click this stuff down. So click from the bottom here, kind of pulling it into place. Okay, and now this should automatically hold that in place. All right, we're gonna work our way up. Again, pushing on the edge and inward slightly to get those clips to go in. Okay, we can go on this side as well. All right, I make it look easy, but you have to know how, what to press where, okay? We have this edge that we also, or this thing that we also need to put back in. So this piece, let me see, is there a thing on the top? Okay, there's not really much that helps hold it in place. You basically have to just 
holding in place yourself. <laughs> so let's see, so, or does it go into the bottom? Let's pull this back out. They always design this different on different computers, so I need to figure out. So the sensor's there, so this blocks it. Okay, so you can see this fits into the, oops, sorry if my head was in the way. Okay, so that fits in there. You can see covered, uncovered. Now we just gotta get this on top. There we go, and now you can see it's locked in. All right, so we gotta click in the rest of the bezel. Again, I'm pushing on the outer edge here. You can see, and then now we can go ahead and push on the inside edge where it has the adhesive. Okay, this piece is a little bit wobbly, but it looks like it's good. You don't really need to worry about the adhesive here, okay? All right, you can see this is kind of wanting to come out. If you want, you can tape this into place here to make sure that it will set properly, and then you can peel that off later, okay? So let's go ahead and get a piece of tape here. piece of tape I'm just gonna fold this over so we have like a release tab I'm gonna fold it twice because I cut a little notch in this earlier okay so we have this okay and I'm just gonna hold this into place and then we're just gonna tape this on like that wrap it around make sure it stays aligned and there we go okay then we just gotta get all of this back together so first things first Let's see, is everything else aligned? This looks good, it's holding tight. Okay, hopefully you didn't overflow the glue there. Um, if you did, you actually wanna put some saran wrap or plastic wrap um, in its, to cover the JB Weld from sticking to the bezel. All right, so this piece, let's see if we can do this without um, pre-doing the hinges. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold the hinge down here and I'm gonna rotate this slightly. Same thing with this one. Okay, let's see if now, if we can get this thing back in without having to take it all apart or to flip it over. So I'm gonna lift this slightly and okay, get that in. We're gonna carefully now let it lower. You wanna go slow because if it's hitting anything, we're gonna have to readjust. So we're gonna slowly lower this and good. Okay, as you can see, the hinges didn't hit. You wanna check this, make sure that's aligned. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna push down here and then rotate the hinge and there you go. It's lined up, okay, looks good. This one's gonna be tricky because this is the actual broken one. So we gotta push down really hard on this, rotate that hinge and get that in. Oh, this has the little lock so you kind of have to maneuver it a little. It will help to kind of lift this up slightly to get it. But uh, yeah, the tricky part is getting this lined up with that this lock mechanism. So it looks like we're gonna have to actually carefully open this. Um, let's go ahead and get these two screws in first to make it easier to do so, okay? So we got that, we're gonna get the two screws here. Got this one here. All right, and then we got the one down here. Perfect, all right. Now this side, we're gonna have to carefully open up this. Luckily this hinge is okay. So we're actually going to be able to open up the laptop and be careful, we have to line this up to go into place. Okay, you can see it's lining up. I don't know if that's JB Weld coming out. Let's go ahead and wipe it just in case. Cause that gray stuff, once it sets, it's gonna be very difficult to clean it off. All right, so we'll try and wipe this. Or is it just scraped? I don't know if it's a scrape because it's not. Yeah, I think it's actually a scratch because that's not coming out. Whatever's there, okay. So that got scratched. You can see now the lock mechanism is lined up in there. So this is the tough part because this hinge is broken. You wanna hold inside to hold that hinge down and then lower this a little bit with the case, okay? And then we're gonna to have to trust in this and push that down and hope the rest of everything down there is lined up. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get this, get that screw in. And now we can't open this until it sets uh, overnight. You usually wanna leave this at least 15 hours, I would say 24 hours to be safe. Okay, so I'll tighten this all the way. We're good. All right, we gotta get this cable back in. So let's zoom in here, I'll show you this, all right. So this, they didn't do it this way, but you wanna line this up, get that in there, okay? Then go under this, hold this cable down, bring that back over, then it goes into this little groove here. Then this swings around this way, over to here. Then we line this up, pull it back, get that in place, line both up, and then pull the whole thing at once. Good, then separate the adhesive from the latch put the latch down, make sure it clicks in, and then you can stick the adhesive down. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get the battery back in and everything. Again, we do want to leave this, um, what do you call, uh, in the closed position. Don't try and open this because it will separate the fix that we just did, and then it's not gonna set properly. So you wanna let it set uh, properly. Okay, we'll grab this, get the battery, line that up. Pinch the connectors together, okay? I know it's zoomed out, sorry. But just line it up, make sure it's going in straight, and then pinch it in, okay? Geez, why is this connector so difficult to pull in? Let's see. See that connector here? I don't know why, but it's being very difficult. Jeez. Let's wiggle and pull it back out. Everything's lined up. Put it on this side. Everything looks good. So I guess it just needs more force. This is gonna be difficult. All right, so let's line this up again and try and pull this whole thing in. Jeez, what in the world? Why is it so difficult? Push the whole connector in, come on. Uh, one thing you can do to kind of help is there's this little square or rectangle there. I like to use a flathead screwdriver and then use that to pull while I kind of pull the rest. Let's see if we can get that to go. It's kind of going. I don't know why it's being so difficult here. Why is it being so difficult? Okay, the battery's just going to line up, fall into place, and then pull this. Pull the battery. Come on, there we go. Okay, I don't know why it was so difficult, but there we go, we got that in. All right, now let's go ahead and put all the screws for the battery back. Let's zoom out. Okay, and this one is still using the EPH1, JS1. All right, so we had three ba or two batteries at the bottom, and then three batteries at the top. I don't know why this model was so difficult to get apart, so difficult to repair. Um, so in terms of upgrades, I don't know if you can get larger than a 32 gig of DDR5 RAM currently. And then the SSD you can upgrade to a much better, larger one if you wanted to, okay? So not really much else here. Let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on. So uh, let's see, we got all of that, yep. All right, and the bottom cover design, I don't think there's any specific design that makes one side have to go first. It's just clips all around, so line it up, click it all down. And these clips are just very strong. That's why it was so difficult. All right, we're gonna switch back over to the PH0, JS0 screwdriver, whichever you have. Um, I like to go to the corners, I twist backwards, you hear that click, and then tighten it down. Make sure all of that's lined up and go. Right, same thing with this one. Twist, click, and then push that, tighten that down. Good. All right, make sure everything is clicked in, including the middle. And then we'll get the top screw here in as well. Good. All right, and we'll get this screw in as well. Good. We'll get this screw over here in as well. And again, now you have to let this sit overnight. 
um, at least 15 hours before you start opening and using it again. Um, I might put a weight on top of here just to help keep it pressed down. Um, though, if you let it set naturally in this closed position, it actually puts less strain because now this is the position, um, like if you're gluing it and it's like this in the closed position versus like this in the closed position. So if you do that, then it's constantly pulling up. So, but if you glue it like this, even though it's like a gap, but the glue's holding it, then it's not having any force pulling on it when it's just sitting there. So it, it will actually be better to let it set this way. Um, once it completely sets, the customer will be able to peel off this glue or the tape um, I have to actually put this in a lockbox for them to pick up later, so, um, yeah, anyways, so they'll be able to get this computer once it's done, and you'll see this video once they've already picked it up and got it, um, but anyways, there's some stuff in here, let me see if I can, there's some dust trap there, I wonder if I can get that out, it's really stuck, oops. a lot of this like feathers dust I don't know if you can see that so I'm trying to clean that out for them it doesn't all want to come out <laughs> all right uh, but that's pretty much it let me see I don't know if I have another tool that I can get that stuff out easier with it doesn't want to budge Right. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. I know it was a very long one with probably an edge case. I don't know how many are going to break this way. If it's a bad design, then you're probably going to have the same exact break, uh, which it kind of is a bad design because they made the hinge so narrow, as I mentioned earlier. So if you do have this issue, uh, bring it up. Let us know. That way we have more proof that these laptops are being designed very poorly. <laughs> Um, but anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.